in and do we have sound now? All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. The sound is good now? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So all I was saying is, first of all, welcome. Uh, for those of you that read lips, well, you've already heard all this. <laughs> right. So um, anyway, what I was mentioning is we've got an inside day today. And I think the audio is working now. Sweet. All right. We're good. We're good. Okay. So uh, yeah, sometimes it lags. But uh, anyway, uh, what I was mentioning is that we have an inside day today. So no reason to get alarmed. I know we can take a look at a, a one minute time frame and really get sort of sucked into the uh, the weakness. There we go. It's that weakness here on the morning. It's easy to get sucked into that with without looking at the daily. You know, look at this. It's it's one candle nested inside the previous, nested inside the previous. This is an inside candle today so far. Yesterday was an inside day or inside candle. In other words, it's trading inside the range of the previous candle. So that's all I was mentioning. And again, um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> all right, good to have audio and video, but we've got charts. All right, so let's get to it. First question. Hey there, Sadri. Um, can we take a look at IRDM? Yeah, of course. We take a look at IRDM. All right, so I, you know, it's funny. I, I, that was, that is the only name on my watch list. I was just looking at today. I am interested in IRDM, but we just had that earnings reaction. So I will wait to see what kind of candle we get in terms of, I mean, you can see where we're going to open pre-market. So chances are, so first of all, we don't enter into earnings, right? So a lot of traders would enter into this pullback as we go into earnings. I don't do that. I don't recommend that. So when we get the earnings reaction, it's the post reaction we're looking for. In other words, what's the candle after the earnings candle? You'll see we're way the heck down here. So I had this written down on my thing from yesterday. And today, I'm sad to say, off the list. Okay, off the list. So no, at this point, I'll have to look at a completely different kind of approach, which is an oversold buy potentially. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, definitely on the same wavelength, but today proved not to be the setup that I was looking for. All right, line watcher, how do I determine if a stock has gone parabolic? What are my parameters? Historical price movement ranges, line watcher. I look at the underlying trend. And I look at the way in which price action, current price action has accelerated away from the wave. And if that exceeds the typical historical volatility reading for, let's say I'm looking at the daily, um, then I'll deem that to be now a parabolic, freshly parabolic market. And that freshly is important, right? If you're looking for a breakout, you want a fresh breakout. If you're looking for a market that's gone parabolic, you want a fresh parabolic market. If you're looking for the squeeze to fire, you know, the simpler flagship indicator, you're looking for a freshly squeezed market, right? That freshly part is really, really important. So thanks for the question. All right. Um, yeah, you like the jazzy? I thought it was pretty good. I, thought, I like the uh, <laughs> I like the jazzy intro, so uh, I'm glad you like it. Very cool. All right, um, Rob. Hey there, Rob. Good morning. Thank oh, my pleasure and happy Valentine's Day to you as well. Absolutely to all of you guys. Yeah. When when is it? On Sunday? Is Valentine's Day on Sunday? Let's see. It's on. Yeah, it's on Sunday. Okay. Very cool. All right. Next up. Hey there, editor. Uh, looks like Apple has been range bound. Let's jump on over there. Has been range bound with this. Have been an opportunity to put my shares into a covered call. Thanks for sharing. Editor, I just got long Apple. We we That was a setup that we were looking at. The opportunity arose and we are looking long Apple. Uh, we have typically what I like to look at are three different levels from which to buy, well, anything. If I'm day trading, if I'm swing trading, um, and I would call this a swing. So yeah, I've got a couple different levels and I'm looking to build a long position in Apple. And you know, here's the thing, as the markets are pulling back, this is when the stuff goes on sale. This is when I really like to get busy in terms of opportunity to the long side. So this is really uh, an exciting time for my strategy, for my approach, which is recognize the trends, find the relative outperformers and buy them when they're on sale. And whether it's the underlying stock or the option, the approach is the same. Whether it's building a call vertical or, or putting on a put credit spread, 
it's all the same. That's kind of one of the things I was walking folks through in the Sector Secrets Mastery, which is yesterday, right, we had that pullback into Tesla. One of the things that I kind of mentioned to everybody is, I don't know, SEC was swirling around that narrative. It's a total, you know, I don't know if it's the Dogecoin thing or whatever, but every time I hear rumors, I don't know what's going on with that name. Who the heck knows? But whenever I hear those kinds of whispers, I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? Probably not the time to want to jump into aggressively. But again, really important to think about your risk in terms of cost. And so Tesla is one of those names I just don't uh, trade in terms of comparing two pullbacks. And I got a lot of pre charts and coffee requests on the uh, on the hotline for Tesla. And, and I'm basically passing gang. I don't trade it that often. It's not my cup of tea, but Apple is, and I do like it, editor. I do like it. All right. So next up. Yep. Nibbling. I'm with you, Alex. That's exactly what, you know, so just to give you guys an idea. Okay. Rock, you say no to Tesla, but what are you looking at? Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you right from our sector secrets. Um, we were looking at Lowe's, we're looking at um, BLDP, we're looking at GoGo, we're looking at Apple. Um, yeah, uh, so usually lower cost options with an opportunity to see uh, some overall movement higher because that would be based on the quality of the trend, the path of least resistance. Thanks so much for, uh, so we got we got sound. Yeah, sometimes, gang, the it acts kind of weird. But yeah, I don't know what that was. But I read. I turned my mic on and off, and it seemed to have woken up. So maybe the mic thinks it's Saturday. Yeah, thanks for that. All right. Um, next up is. All right. Let's see here. Tilray. Okay. Sure. T L R Y. So start with structure. That's that's job number one. Start with structure. Do I like what I see here on T L R Y? Well. Uh, look, pot stocks are what's now just rocking on Reddit. You took a, the, you take a look at that Wall Street bets crowd. What's happening on Reddit? I do track that, by the way, and uh, you know it's a, it's a different segment of my trading, but it is something you would look at it if you were a uh, momentum based trader. That would definitely be something you'd want to watch. Anyway, now where we are pre market, yeah, this is far more interesting now. Absolutely. Uh, chasing it on the way up, I do not play Momo. I do not play Momo. If you can get that early break, like I said, freshly squeezed, freshly parabolic, fresh breakout, that, like yesterday, is hardly fresh, right? Now on that pullback to the 13 exponential or even the 21 or our volume-weighted average price for the year, yeah, now this looks interesting. Now if I want to build a long position, th this could be interesting, right? I would do it with options and uh, make it a small position size. But we know that pot stocks have been rocking on Reddit. We know certain names have been rocking on Reddit. So definitely something to think about. All right, next up is, and yeah, you know what? Didn't write that one down. <laughs> right. The magic stock trading pen. All right, here we go. Next up, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I'll probably be keeping an eye on that one around the VWAP, okay? Thank you. Scott, thoughts about Podunk? Um, yeah, you know, SRMX, I don't have any skin in the game. It's not been on the radar. It's not, you know, again, what I would tell you, Scott, is, is the strategies that I use work on anything. So if we're talking about freshly parabolic and pullbacks on, on, on you know, sort of larger names tethered to ETFs and sectors and the broader indices, I would tell you the same thing when it comes to something like Saddle, okay. Saddle Media. Yeah, I don't. I know nothing about this one. Um, it's trading at a cent. Wow. Okay. So here's the thing. I'll tell you. When does something like this end up on your radar? The sooner you can actually measure that there's a breakout, the sooner you can do that. The the quicker you can get in before the rest of the Momo crowd. So um, I appreciate the question, but I don't have any play on that, and I wouldn't be playing it either. So not that there's any harm in doing that. My advice is going to be the same. Try to get in on that fresh move. The quicker you can have a scan, identifying markets that are consolidating with a volume breakout, uh, taking out new highs, it's just a volume confirmed breakout, right? That's that's going to be the kind of scanning you want to do. Uh, so uh, be Zun. Hey there, Stephen. 
um, is on your skin, is it worthy? It's a double green, my friend, but is it at an actionable level? That would be a negative ghost rider, but keep an eye on it, Stephen. I like where your head's at in terms of the structure. Let's just wait for the opportunity. Thoughts on Disney. Gosh, everyone's talking about Disney, whether that's the parks reopening, whether that's how Disney Plus is doing. Can't buy it near the near the highs. Cannot do that. So, so take a look. If we can pull back to some of these volume levels, could be very interesting about around 180 to 179. Thanks, Samuel. We take a look at Shop, of course. Of course. Shop's one of those names that uh, Kathy Wood and the folks at ARC have been watching. Again, up near highs will not engage the market up here. And you might say, Rog, 1180, 1185, 1190, 1200. Yeah, that's that's about the place that I would consider a longer term swing by. But if I was going to be a little bit more aggressive, probably 1320, but definitely not up near these levels. And, you know, for those of you that might be fans of, say, a, a Fibonacci level or a Fibonacci retracement, you're going to find your 38.2, your 50%. Your gold of mean 618 of this last major move is going to put you in this area. So I won't buy up this. You know, here's one thing you can do. You can shorten the time frame. So if you're interested in something like this, you can shorten the time frame and look for those moments where a one hour or a, or a 30 minute time frame might consolidate. All right. I'm not a big fan of multiple time frame confirmation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about building this trade on a shorter term time frame waiting for a consolidation, and then playing the, the potential boom, that breakout. So that's one thing you could do with something like this that's extended. Because a lot of folks ask me, Rog, we know what you're going to say. I'm not going to buy near the tops. And I won't on the daily. But if you shorten the time frame and you're able to find those uh, moments where the market's moving higher and then it moves a little bit sideways, it consolidates, blue grab candles, um, that's going to be a potential momentum breakout. So uh, definitely something to think about there. SNDL back to that, um, that play with, again, I'm not going to say this is all Reddit, but that, that is certainly something that's been moving some of these types of stocks. Again, much like TLRY, SNDL is going to be, hey, pulls back, maybe to the VWAP, which it has. It's going to open, what, around 191? Closes this gap right in here, 165. That could be interesting, 165. Your risk is muted right? 165 is a reasonable place to, to engage this narrative. But again, never at the highs, never at the highs, always at a pullback of some sort. So in this case, we're going to open what? 190, 165 would be a gap close. Somewhere in that window would be fine for me to be long SNDL. All right, next up, uh, let's see here. Hang on, gang, let me catch up with the questions. Um, yeah, President's Day is on Monday. You got it. And um, yeah, Valentine's Day on Sunday. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do to figure that out. <laughs> uh, which service? Hey there, Charlie. Um, which service is most like John's small account mastery sector or futures um, sector? Charlie, so those of us with masteries and those of you that are not aware of the masteries. So you know, all of us belong to the larger rooms, whether that be the options room or the futures room. And we do, uh, you know, we'll have members um, that are attending both. And we have our traders that, that moderate both those rooms. And so I spend time in both rooms. I don't spend as much time in the options room, but I spend time in both rooms. I'm majorly in the futures. But if you're looking for something along the lines of a single trader, like what John's doing in Small Account Mastery. Yeah, my version of that is a Sector Secrets Mastery, where we're, we're doing these kinds of setups. Um, I shared with you guys some of the setups earlier here in Charts and Coffee. So yeah, I would say Sector Secrets. And the course that would align with Sector Secrets would be my ETF Masterclass. But there's educational material in Sector Secrets. So I'll tell you, look, I'd love for you guys to take advantage of the courses. I spend a lot of time here with my partner in the office putting those together. But there's a lot of learning learning uh, center material that we've put in there to kind of help you get going. So um, as far as a course goes that would align with Sector Secrets, I would say the ETF Masterclass. But check out what's in the Sector Secrets Learning Center, which is very comprehensive. All right. So let's see. What else do we have here? Um 
PFSI. All right. You know, Penny Mac is moving in a range. It's interesting that the 21 exponential is trying to wake up to give us some, some good dynamic support at that moving average. But I'd like to see it double green. I'd like to see it double green. So if you look at where it came from, clearly, my friend, William, I'd definitely look at the long side of this market, but I'm going to be thinking a little bit more along the lines of this is still a choppy market where I'd be considering more of a an over sold buy than you know a, a, a trend follow but it's probably pretty darn close to turning into a double green and a fresh kind of the word of the day uh, a freshly structured uptrend all right and again uptrend is going to be the bias i have because this chop that we've been seeing <clears throat> since october was preceded by an uptrend so uh, good stuff a d s k hey there so a d SK. Mm. ADSK is going to be very similar to the uh, previous question where we have that previous uptrend. Now we have some chop. This one is probably not as close to reorganizing into an uptrend. Is it viable? Yes. The closer you can get to the range lows, or even just this gap close would be very interesting. Let me show you what I mean here. See this gap right in here? We could retest that level. That could be interesting. That could be very interesting. And call it 292, 292 perhaps, if I wanna be a little bit more aggressive than something than the bottom of the range at say 272. All right, so thank you for that. Pins, you know, I've been watching pins. I want a piece of pins. Um, it just lit up with some more of those aggressive eight exponential moving average propulsion dots. Pins is now back into an uptrend. It's not that I ever wanted to short pins. Look at all the green, 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 green. Um, this Whenever it's been segueing into the yellow market, we still want to be thinking long. Can't emphasize that enough. Respect the trend that was. Uh, even a pullback to 80 would be better than buying at these higher highs. So again, I'm not going to be that breakout trader, but we've talked about something we actually never have talked about before in charts and coffee, and that's the process of maybe shortening the time frame, looking for some consolidation, and then a fresh breakout based on the intraday psychology. You know, not for me as ideal as just trend following a daily, but that is an alternative for sure. All right, what's my current sentiment on gold? So, so um, GLD. All right, so. That will start with a, a conversation on GC, right? Gold futures. And I really haven't been doing a lot. If there's anything to do on gold, it's it's to wait for it to get down into this lower part of this choppy range and buy it. That's really it. I have not been actively seeking out a trade in gold. We've had some setups in the futures room where I've identified that oversold buy level for a potential bounce and buying calls on GLD. But I can't say it's near the top of my list on futures that I'd like to trade. What are uh, we just in the previous the premium video from Wednesday and we got into these yesterday, uh, live cattle, corn and soybeans. Right. So I love commodities. I love the commodity futures. But right now, gold is not near the top of my list. Uh, Neo, Neo. Yeah, I'm, we're in NEO. I'm not going to look for a re-entry, but if I were, it'd be in this volume area, 5880 down to even 57 and a half. But I do like NEO to the upside and, and we're already in it. So I'm not looking to get in again. Uh, we got in back in here, but I'd be fine with that zone again. It's still double green. So I kind of look at this as in many ways as sort of refiring, sort of refiring that bullish trade. Okay. So thanks for the question on NEO. Uh, GM, yeah, I love GM. Uh, we're actually looking at GM, but we just entered Ford, but I'd be open to GM, absolutely, absolutely, to the long side. Uh, JD, structure, nice. So the previous pullbacks tell us if and when it does pull back, I mean, look at the way it is. It's pretty violent on those retracements, right? So maybe take advantage of another one of those really violent retracements and look at the double green market, 21 exponential. That'd be fine. 
34 EMA on the close, maybe 92.20 would be another level to keep an eye on. So good stuff, good structure. Good structure on that, JD. Mm, let's see. How are we on time? Oh, just about time to wrap up. And uh, let's see. Question here from Nick. Hey there, Nick. Do I use smaller size when the boat is a buy and the tide is out, like Apple versus the XLK? You know, great question, um, Nick. We could practically dedicate an entire episode to that. Apple's a laggard within the XLK. Absolutely true. I'm betting on this boat uh, being raised by the overall tide, but there's no doubt it's a laggard. When I say I go with smaller size, well, because what I do when I alert out an idea to the folks in sector secrets or even the day trades that we do in futures, whatever it is, I'm going to have a number of levels. So we scale in at an aggro, a moderate, and a conservative level. So it sort of allows you, if you want, to be controlling that risk by buying your largest position while scaling in at the very lowest level, which therefore is A, the least expensive in terms of the cost of the option, and B, the closest to the stop loss. So if you are wrong, that chasm between your entry and your stop is the, is the narrowest. So could I go smaller? I'm, I'm not a big fan on varied bet size. I do like sort of a fixed budget, you know, because I think if we start to think that this is a better trade than this, I think it starts to make us forget that we don't know where the markets are going. And so, well, I may not, I may know the general direction day to day to day to day. We don't. So I have found, I like a, a fixed budget within a range and I'll work that budget for every trade. And if I don't like the trade, if it's, as I say, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. Right. So that's kind of the way I look at it. All right. OK, gang. So uh, uh, one last question here. Hey there, Cindy. Um, you added to CLVR. Well, thank you. I, I uh, you know, this trading style has been something that I have developed over 30 plus years. I like the trend follow. And, you know, however it is you're finding it works for you, even on something like this. I'm super, super pleased. I'm super pleased. Um, all right, last question, NVDA. So NVIDIA finally breaking out of this sideways market. Um, not surprisingly, it's continuing in the direction from which it came. The challenge for markets like NVIDIA is, um, there's only two ways I think you can play a sideways market like NVIDIA. If you're playing a debit trade, lower end of the range, you buy calls, or you focus on the upper end of the range and you wait for a volume confirmed breakout. So, those are the two levels for a, for a debit trade where you would say get long calls. In the meanwhile, in something like NVIDIA, a lot of times traders have done the same thing in Amazon. That's a prime environment, these yellow markets um, for, for collecting credit, for putting on things like iron condors and, and such, where you're focused on the market for the most part, remaining in the range and just collecting credit and using the momentum to maximize what you collect. Right. So uh, good stuff. All right, gang. I, I, we tend to go a little bit longer on Fridays, but uh, head on over to respective rooms. I'll see you all in the futures room and the sector secrets mastery room shortly. Let's see what today brings. Will we get some more opportunities to buy some, as I like to call them, blue light specials, good names on sale? Or uh, are we going to just sort of see how the market opens up on Tuesday? So uh, don't over trade on a Friday. As I like to joke and say, Friday hates traders. <laughs> well, let's be patient. The end of something, end of the day, end of the week, end of the month, end of the quarter, it's a very different psychology than the beginning of something. Keep that in mind. I'll see you all on uh, Tuesday. Have a great one. Maybe we'll do a Monday episode. I'm not really sure. I think the futures markets are open. So yeah, maybe we'll do a Monday episode. So I'll see you next week. Be good to each other, gang. I'll talk with you soon.